Welcome to the next video in the course Finite Element Analysis using SOLIDWORKS. In our previous video, we had a look at the 1D, 2D and 3D simulations in SOLIDWORKS. We also had a comparison between the results of these three simulations that we performed. In this video, we will be talking about something called as the parametric study. In specific, we will be discussing what is a parametric study and why it is used. And we will also discuss on what are the advantages of parametric study, how to access parametric study in SOLIDWORKS and also how to optimize a model using parametric study. And in the end of this video, we'll have a summary of all the topics that we've discussed. So without further ado, let's get started. The first question that we will be answering is what is a parametric study? A parametric study allows you to nominate a parameter for evaluation by defining the parameter range and specifying the design constraints. Once this is done, the software will analyze the results of each parameter variation and give an optimal solution to our problem. The definition sounds a bit too complicated to understand. Yeah, I know that. So don't worry, we'll explain it with the help of an example. So let's assume we have a glass bottle of a certain dimension. The bottle holds say 250 ml of fluid. Now the company that is manufacturing the bottle wants to increase the total volume of the bottle to let's say 350 milliliters. All the while keeping its diameter constant. So instead of running multiple trial and errors, a parametric study can be performed on the bottle. Here we can fix the required parameters like diameter, thickness of the material, shape, etc. and vary the total height of the bottle to arrive at the required capacity with minimal changes in the dimensions and shape. Because of the flexibility to change the parameters of components, parametric study can be a very versatile tool. Another advantage of parametric modeling is that the shape of the model geometry can be changed as soon as the parameters such as dimension or curvature are modified. Because of this, there is no need to redraw the model whenever a change needs to be made. This greatly saves time for engineers and especially in the design stage. With this option, we can also arrive at optimal dimension of a certain component for the required work. We'll get a much better idea of this concept once we proceed on with the software part. So let me open up SOLIDWORKS quickly. So here we have the SOLIDWORKS part interface. I've activated the front top in the right planes. So what I will be doing is I'll just make a simple model and run a simple static analysis on it. And then we'll change the parameter based on the constraints and our goals. So let me just go on to sketch. Again sketch. I'll press the top plane here. And since most of our models were cuboids, this time we'll go with a cylinder. So to make a cylinder, we need to first create a circle. So our circle will be of a radius of maybe 50 millimeters, 50 millimeters. And let's press stick. Okay, so this is made. Let me go back to extrude. And we'll make it 100. Through mid plane so that we get equal 50 mm on the top and 50 mm on the bottom. And let's press tick. Okay, so we have our cylinder over here. And let's now perform the simple uh, static analysis on this. Since we don't have our simulation option activated here, we need to go into the add ins and activate it from here. So once we press this, the simulation license will be added onto the software. It might take a bit of time based upon your system. So we have it now. Let's go press the new study and we'll mark it as cylinder static background nice one there. So we have our cylinder here. Let's assign it a material. My favorite material. I'll just give brass over here. And you can see the color of the material has changed. And the fixtures will just mark uh, give a fixed geometry. Road plus seven to go back to isometric view and the external load let's give force on the top plane i will be giving 50 kilonewtons so that is 50,000 newtons and let's press ok all right so we have now given the force and also fixed the model let's go ahead and mesh it uh, let's just first create, create mesh We'll alter the mesh parameters and say that we wanted a 9 millimeters mesh. Nice. 
our model is now meshed. Let's run the study now. So now you can see that based on the force, a little bit of deformation is occurring on the bottom side and about 9.5 to 10 power 6 Newton per meter square of stress is being generated here. And another important thing is you can see that you can see that the stress values are much lesser than the yield strength. So that won't be a problem because we used a static analysis. If at all our result had a value which is more than the yield strength, then we would have needed to start with the nonlinear analysis. Now, this is the part where we will be moving on to parametric study. So let's right click on cylinder static. Now let's go do our parametric study. So to start a parametric study, what you do is go to cylinder static and give create new design study. So once you go into this design study option, you will be met with three separate options again so the first option that you can see is called as variable so variables are just values that allow you to be varied to get closer to your code so let's say you have this um, cylinder and you can vary the height of the cylinder the material with which the cylinder is made and also the mesh the dimensions and many more you'll understand what this is just hold on for a second and the next one is constraint so constraints are a sort of a limiting factor that will also affect your goal. You can use constraints to uh, set a range within which the part is acceptable. And the last one is goals. The goal is what we expect to get from this parametric study. So let me go and define a few variables at the moment. I've not added anything. So that's why I'm just giving you a few dashes over here. Let's go to add parameter. And here you can see uh, it is quite empty. So if we do is... Uh, we're going to give model dimension and here you can see that it is showing 100 so what 100 is when i double click it you can see that this value is being added so in short what it is doing is it's just importing a certain dimension into the tablet column which you can i can rename it so i'll be naming this one as height so considering this is the height of this cylinder so i'll be naming this as height and enter the next one we want to vary is diameter so if you notice you're not able to see the diameter so that's this once more problem that we have this this uh, model because we have not give uh, marked the diameter when we were designing it so let's quickly go do that i'll go to model edit sketch and 100 is exited. I don't want to change anything. Nice. Let me just go back to design study again. Add parameter. Here you can see the 100 is showing up. So you can do this if one of your dimension is not showing up. You can just go back to your model and define it in the sketch. Just go add 100. And I'll say this is a diameter. And the next one that we will be changing is the simulation. So in simulation, what we will be doing here is we will change the mesh of this model. For that, we need to go to the simulation tab. Here you can see that we have the mesh. Global tolerance. Global size. Yes, that's what required. And that's the mesh. If you remember, we added the value as 9. So we'll just add that one here. And the next value we will be adding is the force. So the external, we'll just go to external loads, click the arrow mark, we'll get this one here. So we've given 50 kilonewtons, that is 50,000 newtons of it. So I'll just double click this one. Oh, see, we need to change it to simulation here. We have all our required ones. So let's quickly add these variables into the table. I'll just press force and then it is mesh. Okay, now that we have all our required variables, I'll just quickly tell you what each of these columns mean. 
so the last column here it's called as step so what step does is it will jump from the initial value to the final value if we set the step value here as 10 then what will happen is initially the value will be 50 60 70 80 90 so we have defined a minimum and maximum range so it will jump from 50 to 60 then 60 to 70 if i keep it as let's say i'll make it as 20 I'll make it as 20 then what will happen is it will first it will run the test at 50 millimeters then it will jump to 70 then it will jump to 90 then it will jump to 110 so like that so what we will be doing is we'll make it as um, 20 and the diameter also let's make it 20 and force you can see that our minimum value is 25 kilonewtons and the maximum value we have it as 75 kilonewtons what we will be doing is i'll just show you discrete values so what discrete value does is that it clubs all three columns and makes it into a single column that means 50,000 newton that will be the force that is acting on the cylinder throughout the entire optimization study so we will change it to a range that means the step will be eliminated and it will run it for 25 26 27 every single instant and the next one is mesh so we have given a 9 millimeter mesh you can change the value to 5 and change it to 10 and the step will make it as 2 and make it 4 to have an even step okay so we've given our variables let's move on to constraints so what constraints does is it'll act like a limiting factor as i explained uh, you'll get a better idea once we add a sensor to it so under mass property uh, we don't need mass property we'll go to factor of safety and we'll add factor of safety we don't want it to be maximum we want it to be greater than one okay uh, what constraint does is every single time a study is done for every single step the software will ensure that the factor of safety of the output value is more than one so that is what minimum is if you're going to keep it as less than if your output value has a factor of safety of more than one the solver will not consider that if you keep it as greater than then the software will only take in values which have a factor of safety more than one so the next one we have here is coals let me go and add a sensor here here we have mass properties and i'll go and click ok for this one once we click the tick we can see that the goal here is to minimize the mass that means the optimal value which we obtain will be of the least amount of mass among these you can actually check the mass here itself one second you can see that it is 785 grams so now that we have everything set up let's go run the study yeah we click the optimization option let's run this so you can see that we have 15 different scenarios with which the study will take place So the constraint that we've given is that the factor of safety must be more than one you can see that the factor of safety here it is 48 48 48 7 and 47 here when the mass is changing and the mass value it is calculated based upon the diameter and the height see the height and diameter everything changes so let's wait for a few seconds let's run So the design study is over and you can see that the height and diameter 50 50 and the force is 25 kilonewtons and the mass is 98.17477 grams so based on the variable and the constraint that we have set the solver has considered 15 different scenarios and given us 
an optimum value all the while minimizing the mass of it so initially we had somewhere around 700 grams of mass and now the mass is just 98.17 grams so this is how a design study works so the design study or the parametric study this is just not limited to a simulation environment you can also do parametric modeling with the help of this so we talked about the glass bottle right we also showed this in the ppt so we'll try to run the same scenario here i'll just minimize this now we need to hit file open open recent yes so here we have the bottle which i was talking about so let me give an isometric view uh, this revolve is not required so i'll just suppress it by clicking this option okay so now we have the clear bottle to initiate a this uh, design study we go to evaluate and design study so our main objective here was to increase the capacity of the bottle so our variables which we have here are the radius and the total height of the bottle I'll select this one and i'll not going to give any explanations here because you have already talked about this stuff just a few seconds ago Okay, we have that step here and we're not giving any constraints and our goal is to increase its volume so here our volume is 246.64 that means it is somewhere around 250 milliliters it's not to minimize is to exactly make it 350 ml just like in the example okay so both the height and the diameter will change and i'll just run this study now so the solver is telling us that there are a lot of scenarios for us to consider so what we will do is i'll increase this to 10 and this should do the trick yes even with that, we have around 50 scenarios. We'll just wait for it to run at all. Okay, the solver has finished running the optimization study. It is telling us that a height of 350 millimeters and with a diameter of 48 millimeters, that is the closest one for our required volume we could have gone a step further and also uh, told it to minimize the mass of this bottle but then again it will also add another scenario and uh, it would have easily gone about 75 so that's the end for this one i hope you just got a good understanding of what exactly a parametric study is in solidworks it's called as a design study so let's have a summary of all the topics that we had covered in this video so in the beginning of the video, I explained what a parametric study is. After that, I explained the importance of a parametric study with the help of an example. We then discussed the advantages of a parametric study. After this, we performed a simple static analysis and optimized the model based on the constraint and goals we set. In the end, we also did a simple parametric modeling of a glass bottle. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, I'll meet you again in the next one.